بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد Continue reading in the chapter the author she has mentioned حفظها الله تعالى الكذب and under the main title uh, and subject, which is Min Afat al Lisan, Min Afat al Lisan al Kadib, from the ills of the tongue and the diseases of the tongue and the dangers of the tongue, al Kadib, lying, lying and being dishonest and, and untruthful. We have seen <clears throat> that this foul trait. Is from the traits of the munafiqeen. Rather, it is from the most specific quality and characteristics of those hypocrites, those true hypocrites. Ayyadhan billah. And likewise, it is a sign of the one who has the trait of hypocrisy in his heart, likewise. A sign for the one who has a trait of hypocrisy in his heart, likewise, lying and not telling the truth and being dishonest. In speech, <clears throat> and we have seen likewise that uh, being truthful and honest, it includes the issue of the heart as well, and, and the creed, and also the manners and the dealings. Also, there is sidq and honesty in the statements, and as well as in the actions. And likewise, lying and being dishonest is contrary to all of that. Is contrary to all of that. But the point of the author mentioning here. Al-Kadib, this is referring to with the tongue, from the diseases of the tongue, lying. In our previous class, we began reading from the narration the author she has mentioned. Uh, and she says, وَالْكَذِبُ يُصِرُ بِصَاحِبِهِ إِلَى الْفُجُورِ That uh, lying, it leads that individual who lies to al-fujur, to al-fujur, which is corruption and evil and indecency. And sin. كما في الصحيحين من حديث عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه as is in the الصحيحين from the hadith of عبد الله بن مسعود رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال that the prophet he has said صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الصدق يهدي إلى البر that verily truthfulness it leads to righteousness and piety truthfulness it guides to it guides to بر it guides to bir, to righteousness and piety. Bir is obedience <clears throat> and righteousness and piety and goodness. This is one of those concise terms. And ismun jami'un lil khayrati kulliha. This is one of those terms that includes all of the aspects of goodness. All of the aspects of goodness. And in manners and in conduct before that in creed and in statement and action and belief. Uh, all of this is from bir. From bir. <clears throat> from righteousness and piety and goodness. It's one of those concise terms. As-sidq yahdi ilayhi. Sidq, it guides to this. It guides to this piety and this righteousness. It guides to this goodness. Wa inna al-birra yahdi ila al-jannah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, and verily, al-bir, righteousness and piety, goodness, it guides an individual to the paradise. It guides an individual to the paradise. This hadith, has some supporting evidence likewise and from this understanding as well in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and those people who are described with Al-Birr they are called Al-Abrar and they are the righteous and they are the pious and Allah Azza wa Jal has praised them in his book in many different uh, places in his book and particularly in Surah Al-Insan Allah has spoken about the Abrar and their righteous characteristics and conduct and uh, their righteous uh, descriptions in Surah Al-Insan, Al-Abrar. But likewise, Allah Azza wa Jal, He has mentioned in His book, and He has said, وَإِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ أي فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَإِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ That verily the righteous, the people of Bir, Al-Abrar, they will be in Na'im, in the delight of the paradise of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is what Allah has mentioned in His book. The outcome of the Abrar is that they will be in Na'im. وَإِنَّ الْأَبْرَارَ لَفِي نَعِيمٍ 
And just like this, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned about Al-Bir, أَنَّهُ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ That this Bir and this righteous conduct and manner and creed and belief, piety and righteousness, it leads to Al-Jannah. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَمَا يَزَالُ الرَّجُلُ يَسْدُقُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقَ That verily a man will continue to pursue the truth and to have concern and care for the truth and being honest and strive to be truthful and honest in the, the, his statements and dealings until he will be written with Allah Azza wa Jal as Siddiqa, as from those truthful people from the Siddiqeen. This is a high la a level in status and ranks from the ranks of the believers, the rank of a Siddiqiyya, the rank of a Siddiqiyya. And the one who reaches a Siddiqiyya, he does that by following the righteous deeds and actions. He does that by Al Bir. By the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal, he's able to be upon Bir, which guides him to. Uh, to the Jannah and it is a means for him to be honest and truthful in his dealings and then he will be from the truthful from the from the truthful Siddiqa Hatta Yuktaba in the Siddiqa وَمَا يَزَلُ الرَّجُلُ يَسْدُقُ It's not intended here a man. يعني المرأة أيضا تسدق وما تزال The meaning here is not just specifically a man. The word رجل here does not mean يعني only this is issue for, for males but rather likewise the females are included in this understanding that a woman also, a person will continue to be truthful and have concern for being truthful and strive to be honest in their dealings and their conduct honest in their speech and statement until they will be written with Allah Azza wa Jal as from those truthful and righteous people. Until they are written with Allah Azza wa Jal uh, as being from those truthful and righteous people. The ulama have mentioned uh, the intent of Al-Kitabah huna hatta yuktaba عند الله siddiqan meaning that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is his ruling, he will be considered from those who are truthful. That also Allah Azza wa Jal will, will make that apparent to the creation and the people will know him by way of truthfulness and he will be known by way of sidq and this person who strives to be truthful and he strives to be upon sidq then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will place that in the hearts of his creation in the hearts of the people and they will know this person for his truthfulness and he will be known for truthfulness and he'll be known from that way and a person who pursues something and he strives to be upon that way and he makes effort and shows great concern for that issue eventually he will be known for that Eventually, he will be known for that. This one, he has the pursuit to be honest and to be truthful. First, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that he sees him and hears him in his, in his statement and his action, and then likewise after that with the people. The one who has this concern, striving against his soul to be honest and truthful, then he will continue upon this way until it will be known. It will be known. It will be written with Allah azza wa jal, and, it, and it is known in the hearts of the people that this man, he is from the truthful. حَتَّى يُكْتَبْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا So this is a great benefit that we see that the one who continues to strive to be truthful and honest, the one who continues uh, over and over in many different circumstances and situations, and no doubt sometimes an individual, he may be tried. He may be tried with uh, the opportunity to obtain some good in this life or to obtain a position or rank or status and all he would have to do is simply uh, be dishonest or tell a lie. To be, to be dishonest or to tell a lie. And if he told this one small lie, like they say, a small lie, that he would think like this, shaitan would decorate it like this, maybe he can obtain uh, a, a great portion of wealth or a position in the dunya or some right. But this person that is being referred to here, the one who becomes written with Allah Azza wa Jal and declared and known by the people that he is honest and truthful, that whenever he goes through life and he's tried by these different situations and tests, he passes them by being honest and he passes them by being truthful. At this time, he will be written with Allah Azza wa Jal as being from the truthful and he will deserve this title, Siddiq, which is actually Sigat Mubalagha. يعني meaning that يعني يعني في فيه معنى ال ال التكثير وثبوت هذه الصفة وتكثيرها يعني أنه صديق أنه صديق يعني that this person is the is described with truthfulness and honesty and it's ingrained in him and he is known for that he is known for that نعم he is known for that and this is the case also that this is the indication that the person who strives in this manner to be truthful that he will have a good ending. 
that he will have a good ending. The people who are truthful, this is an indication here that this person who strives against his soul to be truthful and to be honest, until he's written with Allah جل, as being from the truthful. And this is an indication, and Allah knows best, that this person who strives to be honest in their statement and creed and strives, strives to be honest in their dealings and conduct and their manners and action, and their actions that this person he will have a good ending because of his truthfulness. Allah Azawajal He mentions on the day of resurrection the truthfulness of those of the truthful will benefit them on that day. They will have the benefit and they will be benefited by their truthfulness on the day whenever they meet Allah Azawajal. The truthful inshallah they have a good outcome and a good ending. And what uh, guides to Al Bir Sidq Sidq Yahdi Il Al Bir Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned Wa in al Kadiba Yahdi Il Al Fujur Wa in al Kadiba Yahdi Il Al Fujur and verily lying it leads to corruption. It leads to evil and wickedness and fujur. Al Fujur is uh, one of those words that uh, means uh, something that is uh, lowly and despicable and from action and from deed and sometimes it's even used to refer to fornication and adultery billah, also any lewdness and uh, uh, lewdness and being prolific uh, and, and evil and in statement and in action this is called fujur this is called fujur this is called fujur and it comes from the from the verb fajara Fajara yafjuru, and to be to be evil and to be wicked, and also from the meaning of fajara to blow to to explode. So we see that the origin of this meaning al fajr it means a shak, a shak to split something and to divide something, to split something and to divide something to to for something to come out of its, uh, out of its shell. So in, in this manner, shak al uh, al fajr. So the ulama have mentioned al-fujur huwa shaq sitri al-diyana shaq sitri al-diyana al-diyana yani religion and piety the deen is like a a cover and a a veil and a type of garment for an individual wa libas taqwa dhalika khair and the the adornment of taqwa this is best and better the one who falls into al-fujur is as if, as, as if this garment has become open and split and uh, the reality is seen behind it and he is exposed. Nam so fujur is evilness and wickedness, foulness and corruption. How does one find their way to al-fujur? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ in al kadiba yahdi in al fujur that lying and being dishonest it leads to al fujur evil and wickedness yani deficiency in the deen yadan billah wa in al fujur yahdi ila an nar and verily this fujur this wickedness and this evilness this corruption and indecency it guides an individual to the hell fire it guides and leads to the hell fire Somebody may ask a question, what would lead somebody to the hellfire? I mean, there, are many, uh, there are many avenues and many ways that take a person off of the straight path and lead one to the hellfire. From them, al kadib From them, al kadib Lying. And Allah Azza wa Jalla likewise has mentioned about uh, those people of fujur. And those people who are known for uh, al fujur they're called al-fujjar. Wa in al-fujjar lafi. Jahim and very the fujar the the evil and the wicked they are their destination is the hellfire, ayyadan billah, their destination is the hellfire. What is one of those uh, means or reasons that led them to being from the people of the hellfires because they were people of fujur in this life, and one of the the means that led them to al fujur and evil and corruption and indecency is lying and being dishonest. Lying and being dishonest. وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورَ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ وَلَا يَزَالُ الْعَبْدُ يَكْذِبُ وَيَتَحَرَّ الْكَذِبَ حَتَّى يُكْتَبْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا and, and the servant will continue to lie. And he will continue to lie. Lying in their statement and speech. 
and lying in this manner, being dishonest and uh, and and pursuing lying. And ever every opportunity they get, a person they will lie. And you will find that the person who starts lying, then some people they will they cannot stop lying. They lie about everything. They lie about themselves and they lie about others. And they they mention and they make up situations and scenarios that are not even true and they never even happened. This person any that lies, this is what leads him to that, to to continue lying. And the one who continues to lie, it will, he will continue to lying so much that he will be written with Allah Azza wa Jal, كَذَّابًا as a liar. Meaning likewise that he will be known. It will be known that this person is a liar. Allah Azza wa Jal will expose this person and the people will know that this person, he is a person of lying and dishonesty. This person is a person of lying and dishonesty. And Nawawi rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned about this, about this narration, he says, قال العلماء, the ulama they have mentioned, and Nawawi he says, قال العلماء, the ulama have said about this narration, في هذا الحديث حث على التحري للصدق, على التحري للصدق, وهو قصده والاعتناء به, that this narration, in this narration, there is an encouragement to pursue and strive to be truthful. And the meaning of that is to intend always and to have concerning care with, for honesty and truthfulness. That a person, he loves the truth and he, will, and, and, and he would be ashamed to be dishonest. Whether this causes him hardship or difficulty or not. He will the person who loves the truth and yet harasidaka Yani Yaksidu who be niatihi wa yen we and no who yes do fi kodihi wa amadihi wa yatani be thatika wa yahdar min al kedib shed al hadar. The person who has this tahari, he's pursuing and, and striving to be truthful. He hopes to be truthful. He wants to be truthful. He intends to be honest. And he does not like to be a liar. And he will stay and strive to be away from lying as much as, as one can. And likewise, he said here, uh, The ulama they mentioned, And likewise, this uh, narration is a clear warning from lying. Well, it's a clear warning from lying and also taking it lightly or being negligent with regards to lying. A believer should not be negligent with regards to lying and say that statement I mentioned before. Oh, it's just a small lie. Or somebody will say, uh, if, you, if they're caught in a lie, they'll say, I'm, they're only joking. Or oh, they didn't mean it. Like this. This is, this is making tasahul. Yani being negligent and heedless with regards to this issue. So this narration is a, uh, a warning from being like that and taking lying lightly and taking lying lightly because the one he may take it lightly and take it lightly until in the end it's written with Allah Azza wa Jalla that he's a liar. And this is what uh, Noah he mentions here about the one who takes lying lightly. He says the ulama they say فَإِذَا تَسَّهَلَ فِيهِ كَثُرَ مِنْهُ فَيُعْرَفُ بِهِ فَإِذَا تَسَّهَلَ فَإِذَا تَسَّهَلَ فِيهِ كَثُرَ مِنْهُ فَيُعْرَفُ بِهِ That if this person were to be negligent with regards to lying, if he were to be negligent and taking it lightly and not being serious in this issue of lying, then this could occur from him a lot. And the one who takes it lightly, it would occur from him in abundance. You know, it would occur from him often. And then if it occurs from him often, he will become known for that. He will become known for that. The one who lies one time, two times, and then three times, four times, then eventually he will be known as a liar. And then the people, they will not accept his statement and they will not, or her statement. He will not believe them or trust them or rely upon them and they will be dishonest. And, the, and it will be known to the people that this individual, he is not honest. Rather, he's dishonest or she is dishonest. So this is the case of this narration. This is a warning from uh, lying and a warning from taking lying lightly and thinking that it's only a white lie. So like they say here in America, it's only a white lie or something small. Or the likes like this and make excuses, but rather a believer he will take it seriously because in al fujar al fi jahim that verily the fujar the evil and the wicked people they are in the hellfire, they are in the hellfire al jahim, and from the things that lead to that fujur the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has clarified that it is lying and lying leads to fujur and fujur leads to the hellfire yeah then billah, so she says. حَفِظَهَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَالَّذِي يَكْذِبُ لَا يُصَدِّقُهُ النَّاسِ That the one who lies, the people, they do not believe him. فَحَدِيثُهُ مَنْبُوذٌ وَهُوَ مَبْغُوذٌ عِنْدَ النَّاسِ The one who lies, the people do not believe him whenever he speaks. And he the one who's become known for lying. 
The people do not believe him whenever he speaks, and his statements, they will be rejected, and they will be thrown. And this type of individual, he is detested, and nobody likes a liar. And nobody likes a liar. Naam and the people, they do not like liars. Rather, he, the, the, he will be detested, and he will be, the, the, he will be hated and disliked, because he's known for this foul and filthy trait. Even somebody who knows himself that he is a liar, he does not like to be called a liar. Somebody who is lying, and, and, and sometimes even maybe one will lie in a person's face, and if that one calls that person a liar, and that person knows that he's lying, he still will not like that. He still will not like that. He still will not like that that, that description of being a liar. Yeah, bin that. Now, so she says, "Wasadqa al-shairu if yaqul," and the poet was honest and truthful whenever he said. ما أكبح الكذب المذموم صاحبه وأحسن الصدق عند الله والناس. How filthy and disgusting is lying, and the one who does it is blameworthy. And how great and good is truthfulness with Allah and with the people. And if the one who lies and is known for lying, he's he is blameworthy and not praiseworthy. And he is lowly and not lofty and high and good. Rather, lying is a disgusting trait. As for honesty and truthfulness, then this is something that is very good and something that is very praiseworthy and something that Allah Azza wa Jalla He loves, and likewise the people they love it as well. Likewise, the people they love it as well. So she says, uh, and we continue reading. Hafizah Allahu Taala, Al Kadibu Min Kabair Al Dunub, Fi Al Bukhari, Min Hadithi Samura Ibni Jundubin. رضي الله عنه قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مما يكثر أن يقول لأصحابه هل رأى أحد منكم رؤيا She mentions here الكذب من كبائر الذنوب that lying is from the major sins sins they are different levels and درجات different degrees and ranks in severity from them there are major sins from those and from them there are minor sins from the major sins lying she has mentioned here the narration in Sahih Bukhari from the hadith of Samur ibn Jundu bin radiyallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to say to his companions many times Hal ra'a ahadun minkum ru'ya? Have any of you seen a dream? And this is in reference to a, a, a narration on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that sometimes after Fajr, he would sit with his companions and he would ask them this question, Hal, has any of you seen a dream? And then he would interpret those dreams in, in, for them. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالَ فَيَقُصُّ عَلَيْهِ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ أَنْ So then uh, the Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would narrate to them that person's dream after it's been explained to him. He would, he would interpret it for them as long as, as much as Allah as Allah would will for him to interpret and to clarify. وَإِنَّهُ قَالَ لَنَا ذَاتَ غَدَاتِ And verily he said to us one morning, إِنَّهُ أَتَانِي أَلَيْلَةَ آتِيَانِي That verily this uh, the, uh, last night two individuals came to me. وَإِنَّهُمَا ابْتَعَثَانِي وَإِنَّهُمَا قَالَ لِي انطلق وَإِنِّي انطلقتُ مَعَهُمَا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to them in this morning, he said to them, which one of you saw a dream? And then uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he said, he used to say that to them many times in, in the morning time after the Fajr. And he says here, Samura رضي الله عنه, that one morning, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he informed them that last night, two uh, individuals came to me. Two individuals came to me and they set me up. They, they set me up, they woke me up and set me up. And they said to me, let's go. And verily, we let, I went with them. ma'ahuma. And they said to him, let's go. And verily, I went with the two of them. Al-Hadith. Yani meaning until the end of the hadith, meaning that this is a long narration. This is a narration that has been mentioned that there are two angels that came to the Prophet وسلم, and he went with them. He went with them and he's seen many of the different punishments people receive uh, in, the, in the hereafter. In, in this narration, uh, uh, it's mentioned uh, about uh, many different people and many different punishments. Yani one part of the narration it says, فَأَتَيْنَا عَلَى رَجُلٍ مُسْتَلْقٍ uh, that uh, verily we came to a man and he was laying on his back and there was another man standing over him and in his hands he had hooks from iron 
He had iron hooks in his hand. He has iron hooks in his hand. Nam and uh, this uh, the narration continues to mention that that man with the iron hooks is standing over another man. And he would take that hook and he would put it in the, the cheek, the right cheek of that person. And he would rip his cheek all the way to the side of his head. And then he would take his nostrils and do the same to the right side. And then his eyes likewise. And he would, he would rip him in this manner. He would rip him in this manner with these hooks standing over him. A man is lying on his back. Another man is standing over him with hook, uh, iron hook. And he does this to his face on the right side and then on the left side. And by the time he's done doing the left side, the right side has healed. And then he will start on the right side again and do that to the right side until he gets to the left side. And then by the time he got to the left side, the right side would heal. And he would continue to do this to this person and punish him over and over over and over. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa now she mentions the portion of the narration uh, whenever the Prophet is being informed about that about that man. What, what was his situation and, and, and why was he in this uh, circumstance? She says, وَفِيهِ أَمَّا الرَّجُلُ أَلَّذِي أَتَيْتُ عَلَيْهِ بِشَرْشَرُ شِدْقُهُ إِلَى قَفَاهُ وَمَنْ خَرُهُ إِلَى قَفَاهُ وَأَيْنُهُ إِلَى قَفَاهُ فإنه الرجل يغدو من بيته فيكذب الكذبة تبلغ الآفاق فيكذب الكذبة تبلغ الآفاق. This is a long narration, and there was many individuals mentioned in this narration. Different circumstances of people being punished for different reasons. From them, she is summarizing the narration so that we can see the the proof for the issue of lying and the danger of lying, and also to clarify that it is a major sin. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as for the men, uh, 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 it was mentioned to him, as for the men that uh, we came to, uh, that his, his shidqu, and then yushar shar, shidquhu, meaning that you know, the shidq is the place on the mouth, on the side, where the mouth, where the lips meet, in the side, in the corner of the mouth, where the lips meet on the side, that's called shidq. So this uh, man is putting the iron hook in his shidq and ri ri ripping it all the way back to his neck. And then he's putting it in his nostril and ripping it all the way back to his neck. And then putting it into his eye and ripping it all the way back to his neck. Like this. He said, as for the person that this was happening to his, his shidq, to the corner of his mouth and to his nostril and to his eye, then who is this person? Or, or why is he there? Uh, the Prophet, or it's mentioned to him, excuse me. فَإِنَّهُ الرَّجُلُ يَغْدُوا مِنْ بَيْتِهِ فَيَكْذِبُوا الْكَذْبَةَ تَبْلُغُ الْأَفَاقِ The verily, this was a man who used to go out in the morning from his house and he would tell a lie that would reach the horizons. He would tell a lie that would reach the horizons. So the fact that this person is punished, this type of punishment in the hereafter for lying is a clarification that is a major sin. And this is a threat for those people who are known for lying. That uh, also uh, in this narration is uh, that that great principle in the deen, al-jaza'u min jins al-amal. That whenever this person, his lie and his disobedience and corruption and evil came from his mouth, and then likewise the punishment is in his mouth. That whenever his, uh, his disobedience and he has left the straight path and disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jalla with his mouth, then the punishment is in his mouth. And even the ulama, they mentioned likewise the nose was included in the eyes because they assisted and aided the mouth in this lie. And he, they, they come along following along with the mouth and the, uh, the, 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 they come along following with the mouth. But in any case, this is a clarification that this is, this is a dangerous sin. Lying and not being honest. Saying one thing and doing another. Saying one thing and doing another. Being dishonest and not being truthful. This is something that is very dangerous. She says here, And the greatest lying, the most severe lie is to lie about Allah. Is to lie about Allah. A'udhu Billah. To lie about Allah, meaning to lie about Him and His attributes and His names, Subhanahu wa Taala, or to lie about His deen, His rulings, uh, and to 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 lie about uh, uh, His Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, lying about Allah azza wa jalla, lying about the halal and the haram, saying that this is halal and it's haram, saying that this is haram without having knowledge. Maybe it's halal, saying something is ha is haram and it's halal or it's permissible. 
All of this is considered lying on Allah Azza wa Jal. She mentions, she says, قَالَ تَعَالَى فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ كَذَبَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَذَّبَ بِصِدْقِ إِذْ جَاءَهُ أَلَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوَى لِلْكَافِدِينَ So who is more oppressive than the one who lies upon Allah? Meaning, no one is more oppressive than the one who lies upon Allah Azza wa Jal and disbelieved in the truth after it has come to him. And is not the hellfire a sufficient abode for the disbelievers? And meaning, meaning, no doubt it is sufficient. No? Uh, no doubt it is sufficient. Those people who lie and ascribe lies to Allah Azza wa Jal and fabricate lies against Allah and against His religion and against His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these people, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمْ مِمَّنْ كَذَّبَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَذَّبَ بِالصِّدْقِ إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ And they قَابُوا قَالُوا بِالْبَاطِلْ وَرَدُّوا الْحَقِّ These are the type of people that they have statements of falsehood and they refute and they reject the truth and they deny it. And they deny it whenever it comes to them. يَذِمْ بِاللَّهِ But in any case, we see the dangers of lying and the worst of all lying is to lie upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Is to lie upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From lying on Allah Azza wa Jal, lying on the ulama lying on the ulama and claiming that the ulama have made statements that they did not make because the ulama they speak in, in the name of the deen and the rulings uh, uh, many uh, rulings are based from the, uh, the statements and the clarification that they make with regards to the Quran and to the Sunnah or to the statements of Allah Azza wa Jal and His Messenger and some people whenever they lie upon uh, the, 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 the ulama this is really lying upon his deen and lying upon Allah Azza wa Jal Lying upon Allah Azza wa Jal. And how many people do we see today lying upon the ulama? This is something that is very dangerous. Lying upon the students of knowledge. Even some of them lying and they're not even... Uh, the laymen likewise lying on each other. Yadim Billah. We see here, we go back to that narration to take a, a reminder. An admonition from that. That this person, he was punished this punishment. Because he used to... He would go out in the morning and say a lie that would reach the horizons. Now an individual, he can sit in his, in his home or her home and not even move and literally in moments or in seconds press a button and spread a lie that reaches the horizons. Spread a lie that reaches the horizons. How many people are so quick to, to forward statements? And many of them are lies. Some of them are lies on Allah. Some of them are lies on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Some of them are lies about uh, the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. Some of them are, are, are lies about the situation, about the ulama. Some of them are lies about governments. Some of them are lies about individuals. And they just spread them so quickly. They push the button. And little do they know they're spreading lies to the horizon. They're spreading lies to the horizons of the, uh, uh, of the earth and to the, to the ends of the world. In one moment like this, the person who does this action, he has threat. He's threatened with this punishment. That there will be a person standing over them one day. They'll be laying on their back and someone will stand over them with hooks in their hands. And they will, they will strip their mouth for lying, for using their mouth to lie and spread lies to the horizons. And likewise, their nostril and their eyes. Yeah, then billah. So a believer, remember these narrations and remember this threat. And remember that Allah Azza wa Jal is Sami'un Basir, that He is all He is able to hear all things and to see all things at all times. Uh, and He knows what is in the hearts, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a believer will fear Allah and He will fear this punishment and fear that that day that could come to Him whenever He has to face His statements. And the likes like this, and he will pursue the truth, and he will be afraid to be a liar, and, af and he will be afraid to lie, and he will strive against his soul to be honest and to be trustworthy. She says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّا نِفْتَرَ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أَوْ كَذَّبَ بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءَ أَلَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوَى للكافرين. Likewise, and who is more oppressive than the one who fabricates upon Allah, uh, upon Allah Azza wa Jal? And he's fabricating a lie and he's telling a lie against Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or disbelieving in the truth whenever it comes to him. Isn't uh, the hellfire sufficient abode for the disbelievers? Meaning verily it is truly a sufficient uh, abode for them. Now, <clears throat> so these are some of the narrations that have clarified the dangers of, of lying. Likewise, uh, she mentions Hafidhah uh, Allah ta'ala ثُمَّ الْكَذِبُ عَلَى رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ كَمَا فِي الصَّحِحَيْنِ Then also after that in danger and decree is lying on the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم Just as in as-sahihain 
من كذب علي متعمدا فليتبوء مقعده من النار the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that whoever lies on me on purpose then let him prepare his seat or his abode in the hell fire then let him prepare his abode in the hellfire, a believer should be cautious whenever they speak about the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. They should be cautious whenever they speak about the Quran and the tafsir of the Quran and the meaning of the verses of Allah Azza wa Jal. A believer should be cautious whenever they speak about the hadith and the narrations of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We see today that so many people they hasten to speak about the narrations and they have never studied the science of hadith. And they say this narration is weak and that narration is this and that narration is that. And they have never even studied the sciences of hadith. Some of them will go so far to speak about the narrations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and these precise details of the way of the ulama. And they don't even know the Arabic language, the language that the narrations are revealed in. This is something that is very dangerous. And then also they speak about this is halal and this is haram. And, and they speak about the rulings and what is permissible like this without having any knowledge without having any, any knowledge and they're speaking and they're going beyond their limits. It has been mentioned a great, great wisdom and parable that the ulama have mentioned and they have said, رَحِمَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا عَرَفَ قَدْرَ نَفْسِهِ May Allah have mercy on a servant who knows the, his own level, who knows his own rank and status. The person who knows something and he knows that it's correct and it's clear or she likewise, then they speak about that. But what they do not know, they do not speak about. They do not say something they do not know or they do not have certain knowledge about. And especially they do not carry the statements of others, especially if those other people are also from the similar ranks. They're not people of knowledge. So we don't carry their statements. We don't carry their statements. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam likewise he has mentioned Kafa bil Mar'i Kadiban and Yuhaditha Bikuli Masame that it will suffice a person uh, to be considered lying or to fall uh, uh, falling into a lie that he will narrate everything that he hears. So every time somebody says something, we don't narrate all of that to the people. Even sometimes a narration may be true. It may be true. There may be no doubt about the authenticity of the narration or the statement of somebody, but not always is it beneficial to transmit that. Not always is it, be, it been, is it beneficial to, to transmit that. From the beneficial statements I, I remember from the, from the ulama, that they, many times they will say in, in the likes of this issue, or in the light of this uh, subject, لَيْسَ كُلُّ مَا يُعْلَمُ يُقَالُ Not everything that one knows should be said. وَلِكُلِّ مَقَامٍ مَقَالُ And every situation it has the proper statement. وَلِكُلِّ مَيْدَانٍ رِجَالُهُ And in every field there are men for that field. There are men for that field. So not everything somebody knows uh, it should be mentioned. Not everything somebody knows has to be mentioned at every time. Rather, a person, he may uh, know something and he may uh, prohibit from, or, 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 or refrain from stating it because it may bring harm. It may bring harm. Or he may state it at another time that is more beneficial and more proper. So then a person, he'll be careful about claiming that this is halal or that this is haram or this hadith is weak or this hadith is not weak or, 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 or the likes like this. And they would, or, or that this verse it means this or that this verse it means that. <coughs> and, and, and the likes to, to be cautious from lying uh, on Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah he mentioned in his book, وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَاتُكُمُ الْكَذِبَ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُفْرِحُونَ لَا يُفْرِحُونَ That Allah he has said, the meaning of which is, and do not say with your tongues, what you describe with your tongues, that while, while lying that this is halal and this is haram. Inventing and fabricating a lie against Allah. Verily, those who fabricate lies against the lies, they will never be successful. So a believer will be cautious uh, in, in declaring things to be halal and to be haram. The, be cautious uh, declaring a, a hadith to be authentic or inauthentic. And uh, from the means of being cautious about these affairs is taking knowledge from the proper and the reliable sources. And not from everybody who comes and goes and everyone who speaks about the deen. And not from everybody who, who, who puts the dress of the ulama on or the speech of the people of knowledge. Uh, not all of them uh, are truly as they, uh, as they appear. As we have seen from the examples of this in the, the book, Akhlaq al-Ulama, that there are ulama who are juhal, uh, fusaq, ayyadhan billah. 
she says, I feel Allah woman sorry kadib and from the the forms of lying, uh from the forms of lying is to promise a child to give them something and it's a lie. Like the statement of the mother to her baby or her child, Ta'ala, أعطيك هذا. Ta'ala, أعطيك هذا. Come, I'm gonna, I will give you something. وَإِذَا جَاءَ لَا تُعْطِيهِ شَيْئًا And whenever the child comes, she doesn't give him anything. And this is considered lying. This is from the forms of lying that a mother or, or, or a father or an individual, a brother or a sister likewise, any, a person... And if she's making an example of a mother for the for the sisters to understand, she will tell her child, come, come, I'm going to give you something. And then pretend she has something in her hand, maybe. And then whenever the child comes, there's nothing there. She doesn't want to give the child anything. She just wants the child to come. So she lures him by lying. By lying, this is considered a lie. She says, And just uh, this, this meaning has been narrated in a hadith that has been narrated by Imam Ahmed from the narration of Ibn Shihab on Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said uh, whoever says to a baby or a young boy or a young child come here I'll give you something and then he does not give it to him then this is considered a lie then this is considered a lie she says وَلَكِنَّهُ بِهَادَ الْإِسْنَادِ فِيهِ انْقِطَاعٌ فالزهري لم يسمع من أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه كما في جامع تحصيل. So she says here, but uh, this narration in this chain there is uh, a missing link in كطاع. And because the Zuhri, this is who was Ibn Shihab, his name is Muhammad Ibn Shihab, Muhammad ibn Ubaidullah ibn Abdullah ibn Shihab al Zuhri, رحمه الله, he died in the year one hundred and twenty four. She says he did not hear from Abi Hurairah. He's narrating on Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. She says he did not hear from Abi Hurairah. It's been mentioned Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. He died in the year five, uh, in, in the year, excuse me, uh, 57, 58 or 59 in, the, in this area, or 57. Some said 58 or 59. And uh, if we look in the biography of Ibn Shihab, rahimahullah, he, died, he was born in the year 57. Uh, or 58 in, the, in, this, in this area. So he, whenever he was born, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he died. So there's not possible, it's not possible that he, that he heard from him. That he heard from him. Now, so there's a missing link in this chain. This is from the benefits of knowing the narrators and when they lived and when they died. <clears throat> that a person can identify easily the, uh, a missing link in the chain. As Zuhri, he did not narrate from Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. He did not meet him. And Allah knows best. Now she says, uh, so the, this hadith is clear, but the meaning of the hadith is correct. And even Shaykh Al-Bani, rahimahullah, he has authenticated this hadith, uh, possibly because it, the weakness is a, is a light weakness. And uh, also, um, also <clears throat> it has other narrations that support it. Like this narration also uh, that has been narrated in uh, Sunnah Abi Dawood from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amir. And he was a child. She said, oh, excuse me, he said that uh, verily my mother, he called, she called me one day and the messenger of Allah وسلم, is sitting in our house. She said to him, come, come here, I'm going to give you something. فَقَالَ لَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ So the messenger at this time, he, he said to her, صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ وَمَا أَرَدْتِ أَن تُعْطِيهِ So what did you want to give him? And she said, come, she said to her child, come here, I want to give you something. And then the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ said, so what, so what do you want to give? What do you want to give him? She said, قَالَتْ أُعْطِيهِ تَمْرًا She said, I want to give him some dates. فَقَالَ لَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ So the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said to her, أَمَا إِنَّكِ لَوْ لَمْ تُعْطِيهِ شَيْئًا كُتِبَتْ عَلَيْكِ كَذْبَتٌ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, Verily, if you did not give him anything, then a lie would be written against you. 
then a lie would be written against you. This narration is found in Sunan Abi Dawood in the book of Al-Adib, Fi Kitab Al-Adib, in the book of manners. Uh, Abu Dawood, a Sijistani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he narrated this narration in his book as Sunan, in the chapter Al-Adib. And from the manners is that a person does not lie. From the manners is that a person who does not lie. And the, 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 the name of the chapter in the book of Adib here, he named that chapter Babu At-Tashdeed fil Kadib. And in the chapter of being severe and stern against lying. He mentioned the narration that preceded, that lying it leads to the hell, to, to Fujur and Fujur leads to hellfire. Also, he mentioned that narration in, in, in the same chapter. The chapter of severity and harshness with regards to lying. And this is a very severe issue that even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he considered it a lie for an individual to say, come here, I'll give you something. And whenever he comes, he does not give him anything. He doesn't, he, he, he's telling him to come and he wants to give them something. But he does not intend to give them something. He's trying to get them and to lure them. This is considered likewise like Kutibat Aleki Kathbatun. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told her that a lie will be written against you, that a lie will be written against you. She says, uh, and he, one of those, uh, also those works of her father, Sheikh Bukbi Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he has a book called A Hadith Al Mu'alla. The A Hadith Al Mu'alla. She says, look into this uh, book if you want to find more details about the narration she mentioned of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu and uh, its uh, missing link in the chain and the deficiencies in the chain. A hadith amu'alla, yani the narrations that have in them illa. A illa is, uh, is an inconspicuous mistake and defect. And this is the type of error that occurs in the narrations of the upright and authentic narrators, uh, the mistakes of the thiqat. And this is something that's very, very detailed information and hard. And from the most detailed and uh, high levels of the sciences of hadith is to be able to identify uh, al-illa, al-illa. سبب خفي يقدح في صحة الحديث. نعم الشيخ موكب رحمه الله تعالى. He has a book about this issue and about narrations that have this issue. And what is apparent from looking at the narration is that it's authentic. All of the narrators are upright and solid and sound, but there is a there is a hidden defect in there, like in this narration here. If one were to look at the chain and to see that this chain goes from Ibn Shihab to Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, if the rest of from from Imam Ahmad to Ibn Shihab were all authentic narrators, somebody would say Ibn Shihab is Imam Thiqa and Hujja, and then Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu he's a Sahabi, so they would think Allah Akbar, they're all the chain is all th- uh, upright narrators, but in reality Ibn Shihab he did not meet Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, so this is a hidden detail that uh, the, 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 the layman or the beginner student of hadith will not be able to recognize. But as for the one who has studied and learned and has become proficient in that science, then it will, it will, be, uh, it will stand out for him. Those who know the tabaqat of the rijal and, uh, and the narrators of hadith and when they live and when they died and who they narrated from and who their shuyukh are and who their students are, so on and so forth. So she says, حَفِظَهَ uh, Ta'ala وَالْكَذِبُ عَلَى الطِّفْرِ يَفْتَحُ بَابَ شَرٍ مُسْتَطِيرٍ فَالطِّفْلُ يَسْتَعْلِمُ هَذِهِ الْخَصْلَةِ فَيَكْذِبُ فِي حَدِيثِهِ وَيُخْلِفُ فِي وَعَدِهِ She says here a very important point. We see Abu Dawood, he mentioned this narration that, that I refer to, similar to the narration she mentioned, and in the same meaning, in the chapter of Adib, and manners, and conduct, and how one should discipline and, can, and carry themselves. She says here, lying to a child, it opens up a, a wide door of evil, widespread evil. Lying to a child in this manner, or even directly lying to them. Until the, and they know and they find out that that person is lying. This opens the door of evil, widespread evil for the child. Because the child at this time is learning how to lie. The child is learning this trait of lying from their parent or their guardian. And then he will begin, uh, because of this, to lie. Because the parent lies. And also to, uh, to go back on their promise and to, uh, and to betray the trust and so on and so forth. And an indication... Uh, for the fact that the children they learn from their parents if they're if the children if the parents they have good manners and they deal with with their children with the best conduct and likewise they deal with each other with the best conduct then the the, the children they learn that from their parents but if the parents are harsh and rude all the time or mean and are raising their voice then likewise the, the child is not going to be soft-spoken 
because they learned that from their parents. Just as the example here, she says that any the how does the child learn lying? It learns the lying from, uh, from the from the from the parent. If the parent lies, then the child would lie. If the parent is dishonest, then the child learns dishonesty from the parent. If the if the parent is rude, and, and, and disobedient, then likewise the child learns from the parent and he, uh, directly from them. Maybe the, the 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 parent is not teaching them directly, but they're learning from uh, from um, uh, experience. They're learning from from experience. May Allah help us to raise our children upon piety and righteousness and upon the way of the Salaf is Salih with sincerity and ikhlas. With sincerity and with ikhlas. We close with this, inshallah, today. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.